Hi friends, welcome to Afar Studies YouTube channel. This is the part 2 video in GitHub playlist. So in this video, we are going to discuss about what is Git, benefits of it and how to download that and configure that in your system. Okay. So in our previous video, we have discussed about what is GitHub. So please watch that video so that you will get most out of it. So if you remember in our previous video, we said that GitHub is a code hosting tool or a software, right? If you want to host code and try to work with the whole team in a collaborative fashion to develop that code, then GitHub is the best tool. So inside GitHub, right, we will be having something called repositories actually. So that repositories actually help you to place the code there, okay? and uh, anybody can interact with that code which is available in the repositories. We will discuss more about the repositories in our upcoming video, but have this basic idea. Now, when you keep the code inside the repository, how it actually works? I mean, uh, I'm telling that if you have a code there, then 10 different people can interact with it uh, and they can modify the files and they can perform the pull request and all, right? Uh, we, we will see all that in practical in our future videos. Don't worry. But uh, the point here to note is how that is possible. So uh, that is possible because there is something called Git. Okay. So Git actually help you to perform the version control. Okay. So as you can see here, Git is nothing but like a free and open source distributed version control system. So imagine like it's like a software that can help you to perform the version control. What that, that it means? So it means that, so let's assume you have a Python file called sample.py. So if you edit this file by removing some rows in it or by adding a new rows to it, whatever it is, right? It will maintain the previous version also and the latest version also. Okay. So like that, it will continue throughout the uh, life cycle of the file. That means how many days you have that file with you and how many ever changes you do for every change it will maintain a version uh, that's what we call a version control system so this software automatically keeps track of the versioning of the file and whenever you want to revert back to the previous versions you can usually do that so that is called version control so whatever the changes we do on a files the changes will get saved and the previous version of the file also will be available, right? So that is called version control. So we no need to do anything for that. This Git version control tool will automatically take care of it. Okay. So in GitHub repositories, we have that Git version control tool automatically inside of them. That is the reason in GitHub inside the repositories, you can see all the changes with full details there. So when you are working with this GitHub, uh, generally you don't edit the files in the repositories inside the GitHub directly. So generally you will do that in the local. So what generally you do, you do the edits in the local, that means within your laptop and then push that changes to GitHub, GitHub repository. That means GitHub repository is nothing but like a remote repository. Okay. So remote somewhere at cloud. So this is the usual practice. So whatever the changes you do on the code or the files, you will do them on the local. So that means in our local system also, we need to have the version control system. Using that, we can create some local repository in our local system and then we can perform the changes and we can track the changes in our local repository too. And finally, once we feel everything good, we can push them into the remote repository, which is within the GitHub. So to do all this, actually Git software has to be installed in our local system also. So within our local system also, we should install the Git software. So there is a need for it. So, so that is the reason the version control we will install in our local system as well. And that is what we will discuss in this video mainly. Okay. And even in the GitHub, as I said, the repositories will have this version control automatically. Uh, now we have to work on a local. So in our local also, we have to install the Git. So to install the Git, we can go to this link and install it actually. Okay. But before that, what are the benefits of this Git version control, right? So it will allow you to track the changes of the code over the time. As I said, right, whatever the edits you do, it will maintain the versions. 
and it will enable you to collaborate with others on the same code base so not only you your own team members you guys can work in a collaborative fashion on the same code base and it will also give you the capability to revert back to the previous versions so let's say you edit a file and you felt that something is not working there you want to revert back the changes into the previous version that is very much possible having this git version control tool and it will keep track of all the changes whatever we are doing it and generally what are the tasks when we we perform using this git in our local that means in our system is we will create a repositories in our local also so as i said here right first we will create a repositories in our local and we will do the edits there and we will push that changes into the remote repository which is within the git repository okay and we can create a branch we can create a files in it we can stage the changes we can commit the changes we can delete a branch and we can push the changes to the remote repository so all these are like a common task what we do so branch means nothing but like a imagine like a repository means like a, a big parent level folder and inside that a subfolder is called like a branch imagine that way we will discuss that over the time when we practically enter into implementation part in our upcoming videos so let's try to download this git via official site first in our local and let's try to configure the git in our local system first so to do that click this link here uh, you can google in the web in the browser as well and search like a git download it will you will land with the same link there so once you go that hit that download for windows because it's a windows system and then you can hit the 64 bit windows setup installation so this should download a copy of the executable file for you using which you can install the git in your local system so it is downloaded it let me click this open file link to open this git and start installation okay so we have to click next here next uh, already exists would you like to install the folder anyway yes okay and uh, i'm adding a desktop icon also a shortcut to the desktop also if you can see here so i want to add a shortcut to the desktop as well for the git bash git bash is nothing but like a git console imagine that way so next next simply click next next most of the times right we no need to change anything so we can hit the next next continuously okay so i am doing that continuously okay so that's it so now what it is doing it is extracting the files and it will try to install the git in your windows system great looks like installation is almost complete let's wait for this uh, installation window to close great installation is completed so i can select this launch git bash it's a git console where i can execute some commands you can see that git bash is open let me click uh, just once it will just open the release notes actually so we no need to worry about it so let's go back to this git bash and if you can see here so this is how the git bash will look like and right now it opened in this directory and i can run some git commands here to configure the git first time so firstly i want to check the version of the git to do that i can write git hyphen space hyphen hyphen version so when i run this command right it should get me the git version so let me hit enter and you can see the results right so if you are able to list down that version that means git is installed in your system not only in the git bash even in the command prompt it should work so let me open command prompt here and here uh, let me try to run the same command git space hyphen hyphen version so when i run that you can see that git version is installed so that means even in the command prompt it will work the git commands will start works when you run this command if you see that there is no response and it says that git is not recognizable command then that means that git is not installed in your system okay but if you see the version that means it is installed now as a first step right whenever you install git in your system you need to configure something in your local computer because using the git which you install in your local computer you will be creating a repositories within your local system and you will be uh, creating a files there and working with them right so git will help you to do the version control in your local system on the local repository but to do all this right git need the user id i mean username and the email id who is performing all these actions as i said 
git will keep track of the history right it keep track of the versions so it has it will also keep track of the details along with the user who is doing that right so for that giving the username and the user email id in that local system is always mandatory we have to configure these two to the global directory within the git in our local system so we need to run these two commands so let's run these two commands here so first thing is i wanted to add a user so i can i can write a command here git config then space hyphen hyphen global space user date name equals to maybe i can give my name okay so my here yeah that's fine only my here okay so when i hit enter it would have added my name into the local git global username okay then i am writing one more command here to add email id to the global list of within my local git so user dot email then here maybe mahir basha at the rate outlook dot com okay so when i hit enter even that got added so now by any chance you want to see the list of the global usernames or email ids then you can run this command git config space hyphen hyphen global space hyphen hyphen list so when i run this you can see that global list there right so what this means is from now on if i create any repository in in my local computer and if i do any edits all that versioning it will maintain or the audit it will maintain using this information so uh, for this user it will maintain all that edit or audit related information or the version related information so it's kind of a first step once you install the git in your local system add your details to the global user object within the local git okay so that's it in this video in our upcoming video we will try to create a repository in the github also in the local git and then we will try to establish a connectivity between them and we will discuss various tasks which we generally perform in our local using the local git and how we can push the changes from our local to remote uh, uh, remote location which is the github uh, repository right how to do all that we will discuss in a practical approach in our upcoming videos so thank you for watching this video if you like the video please consider subscribing to the wafa studies youtube channel thank you have a nice day